For me, I always wanted to be a director. I came up doing youth theatre and being an actor, but knowing that I was going to, or I was more interested in something else. And so I started directing even as a teenager in theatre. I have always been attracted to storytelling and originally I was acting in theatre, but I think I became interested in writing because I just tended to write in general. I was that sort of person that journaled a lot. And I guess there was an element of me making sense of the world through writing. One of the things I wanted to, to do when I left school was to never wear a suit and to not sit at a computer all day. Moving from my hometown and the work that I'd been doing there, um, to Sydney to study at film school was pretty major, you know. And then actually making the decision that it was drama and that it was directing. It kind of encapsulated the kind of life I wanted. It's like a drug, filmmaking. You just have to keep doing it to fulfil this need of like creating something and making something and telling a story. My first television producing credit was a Jonathan M. Schiff production called H2O Just Add Water. It was a script assistant on Underbelly, A Tale of Two Cities. I think my first film, apart from little things that you do at uni, was something I did at Metro Screen. My first credit in filmmaking was I made a short film called Blind Man's Bluff that was um, supported by Screen Australia. When I wasn't making my films, I was facilitating other people's filmmaking and other people's stories. You learn by watching others, not just on a set in an attachment, but in a situation where you hear other people's stories and see their creative ways of interpreting that. I mean, collaboration is at the centre of what we do and the idea that we're not working with other people or that it all comes from one person is crazy. All these other people with such extraordinary talent, you want to be working closely with them. It's a bit of an obligation for me. It's sort of like a personal thing to think about newer filmmakers and how they're going to get through all of this and ways to inspire them. My first mentor absolutely is Rianne Skirving, who I ended up co-directing my first documentary with. Felicity Packard was my honours supervisor at university. And then when I got my first gig on Underbelly, A Tale of Two Cities, she was a writer, I was a script assistant, and it was very reassuring to have her in the room when I started. All of the um, female directors that I've worked with have made an impression on me in some way or other, even Dana Reed and Kate Dennis, who worked on Miss Fisher are off doing Handmaid's Tale and other great Australian and American and European work. I did have a major mentor and that was my husband, Brian Brown. His support was essential in making me feel that I had the right to be behind the camera and I was supported by him in every way. I made two shorts actually, one doco and one a narrative fiction and then I got a call from John and Dan Edwards who'd seen one of those shorts and said, what have you got? What else have you got? Show us something. I showed them something and then they got me on board a project that they were working on with Gregor Jordan called Australian Gangster. And it was, yeah, it's huge, huge, unreal, amazing experience. And as I matured as a filmmaker, being inspired by other filmmakers who are my contemporaries. Quite a few years ago now, I did the first season of Top of the Lake with Jane Campion and Jane and I became good friends and she's been incredibly supportive of me since my first short. It's a really lovely sort of small community of filmmakers and we all know each other and it's nice to be a part of the Australian filmmaking family for want of a better expression. I've worked with so many fabulous women, some of them being Sam Strauss, Liz Doran, Melina Marquetta, Lou Smith, Penny Chapman, Emma Freeman, Dana Reid. I've been incredibly lucky to work with incredible women. When I first arrived in Australia and I saw for the first time really ever that, my God, there were women behind the camera. There was Jane Campion, there was Gillian Armstrong, there was Sophia Turkowitz and a few other women it made me realise that women helm stories here. And I got very overexcited about that and thought, whoa, well, I'm going to try and do that too. I was quite shocked to discover that actually it ended with Jane Campion, Sophie, <laughs> Sophia Turkowitz and Gillian Armstrong. They were the exception to the rule, not the norm. It is hard to see something if you, you're never being reflected there. I didn't even notice that there were not enough women directing, writing behind the cameras. I mean, the fact that there had to be something called Gender Matters to put the spotlight on women 
in film tells you that it perhaps isn't as at capacity, it isn't doing what it, it should have been doing for many years. I feel like maybe five to eight years ago, if you were to speak out about something maybe not being as, as good as it could be, maybe we should be listening to these voices or maybe it would help to get a female writer on this project. It was a lot easier for people to say, oh, they'll never get approved, so we tried. And now, thanks to the work of Screen Australia and other funding bodies and, and just other ad advocates, I think people are starting to listen to these voices and opinions a bit more. I think we all have a responsibility to change the industry. So whether you're a producer and you're in charge of hiring your writers and your directors and then everybody else on the crew, whether you're the writer and you're writing really fabulous female protagonists, broadcasters have a responsibility to develop, to finance and to broadcast fabulous Australian drama featuring women on camera and behind the camera. I really feel a great change in terms of the amount of emerging female directors out there. I feel like there's a whole swathe of people alongside me, ahead of me, behind me, and that, that feels exciting. Over the years, I have found there's been a lot more respect towards female directors. And also, I think the proof is starting to come out. You know, we're having these stories internationally and locally that are connecting with audiences that actually do represent the world that we live in. I'm grateful to the, to the fact that it's been a conversation and it's been pushed by everyone, by the funding bodies, by journalists, by individual people, we've all pushed that conversation and it's pushed people through the system. The more that we as audiences like seek out and look for difference and are looking for stories that are enriching and new and surprising, the more we're going to find that it's different kinds of filmmakers that are making those. I think it's really, really important that we see a fair representation of our society on screen and the only way to do it is to have people behind the camera telling those stories.